As time goes by, our memories help to mold the person we are. Everything from the school you went to to the town you grew up in, those memories are especially important when the place you grew up in only includes a handful of families. This is the case for Wheeling, Indiana. Located just 11 miles from Princeton, Wheeling includes just a few homes, a church, and one old cover bridge. But to get a better sense of this small community's past, it's best to talk to local resident, Harold Williams. Just like the covered bridge, the different things that happens around that bridge. So, and back in those days, uh, we're talking about 75, 80 years ago, teenagers didn't have transportation. That bridge was the place where teenagers on Sunday evening, that's where they met. And uh, so, and at that time, the little old place called Wheeling had 96 people there. Now there's less than two dozen. The memories Harold shares are like an audio history book for this small town. But unlike most stories passed down through time, Harold's tales include a bit of visual art. This church was built in 1894. And if you look at this picture in 1896, you see how big the congregation was. What's amazing to me is that many people, you wonder how far they had to walk to get there because the only transportation would have been a horse or, you know, wagon or something of that sort. This replica I made for Patty Craig. She, when she was a small child, her family lived near that church. and. Uh, she would go with her father when she was very small to build fires in that church. Uh, there was two heating stoves in there. Harold's workshop is cluttered with snapshots in time, albeit in smaller forms. From local churches and barns to the cover bridge that brought the community together so many years ago. All of them built by the man himself there is an attention to detail when constructing the replicas, whether it comes from structures still standing. I take my tape measure and I measure it, and uh, I, after I, make, I have a scale, I know, just like that bridge, that's built on a half inch scale. If you measure that bridge, the framework was one of the measurements I took. I took the width of the framework, I took the height of the framework. Or even those snapshots from the past. That church over there, that it's got a concrete block foundation. Well, a concrete block is 16 inches. You count the number of blocks, multiply the number of blocks by 16 divided by 12, it gives you the footage, the length of that. Not only that, the weatherboarding on the old churches was like five and a quarter inches. And I actually had to take a magnifying glass to to count the number of the weatherboarding and so on, let's see. The detail in these replicas is great. As you look closer at the construction, you would suspect it was built by a person with a great carpentry background. Harold has that background, but he didn't come by it traditionally. My wife that had passed away, uh, she and I built a house one time and uh, I had no plans until I, I visualized in my mind what I wanted that to, and I tried to explain it to her. And she said, don't do that because I won't remember. So just, we just build it like you think it ought to be. So we built a four bedroom home, two baths and a full basement, dining room and living room, kitchen, utility room. And uh, the, when it, it turned out just beautiful. And we did the majority of work herself. That's the carpentry experience of I've had. <laughs> At 85 years old, Harold has plenty of memories living in this small town to work from. Now we'll look at the, the barn here. We played basketball in there and they were, uh, there would be so many teenage boys there on a weekend. We couldn't all play at one time. We had to take turns of playing in there. 
And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just put their names on there. And that's some of the boys that played the most in there. Each piece has a little bit of history. In a personal touch. She was a friend of my wife's. Uh, Rosella Camel was her name. After my wife passed away, I stopped one time to visit her. And uh, she wanted me to make her something. So I remembered a Christmas card that my wife had got from her from many years ago, and uh, when her children were small. So I made her one of these. I took that Christmas card, my daughter Carolyn had it laminated in plastic, put that picture in that low cabin, and so when she opened the door, she saw her children. Or recycling a bit of Wheeling history to be preserved for generations. This house here, this belonged to the Watkins family, and that is the Watkins family back in the 18, early, late 1800s. And this, uh, this house they gave me to tear down, well, to, to get the wood out of it. And this house was built before 1850. Harold used the wood from the Watkins home to build his replica covered bridge. Pieces of wheeling history saved from the trash heap. This co actually come out of the inside of floor joists. That, and uh, everything, the shingles, everything you look at here came out of the inside, all but the blocks on the end. Wheeling is probably best known for its covered bridge. So it makes sense that Harold's replica also garners the same kind of attention. Well, and something that's that are very gratifying is no matter how small the project is, everyone, when it's complete, is a feeling of accomplishment. It's very gratifying. I built that bridge, and if something ever happens to the Wheeling Covered Bridge, if it burns, destroyed in any way, future generations can see what that bridge actually looked like. Securing the memories of this small community for the future. Mm -hmm.